everybody. Welcome to the Blue Collar Gospel Hour. I'm your host, Dan Denton. I'm here today with our producer engineer, Simba. Howdy. And with my good friend, the incredible poet, Mike Hackney. Hello. So we're hanging out here in Not A Duck In Any Row Studios. Uh, I've known Mike for uh, several years. He's uh, become a good friend of mine. Uh, somebody that I would say is I respect very highly as a poet and an artist. And uh, so uh, anyway, how you been, Mike? Dude, actually, um, with some meditation and the changing of the season, I've been really good. And uh, writing a lot and uh, kind of being on a creative peak here. Uh, happy birthday, Dan, hey, by the way. Thanks, Dude, Mike. Another I year, and, uh, yeah. and you got many more ahead because uh, I hope so. you're a lot younger than we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> some, are. some of us are, uh, yeah. Anyway, I won't go there. Uh, life's good, good. Uh, Dan. And I was just explaining to Simbo a minute ago that poetry for folks like us is more than just a hobby. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, this is a little bit above and beyond a hobby. This is a lifestyle choice. And um, with that comes responsibility and great reward, as you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, That's probably, the, it's probably true for all forms of art. Probably there's probably some level of, you know, backyard guitar picker compared to singer-songwriter, you know. Absolutely. Well, there's a lot of people that are on the cusp, you know what I mean? A lot of sure. people don't want to make anything of it, but they want to do it all the time. But then there's people like us who don't look at it as just a hobby. Yeah. You know. You know, it's interesting. I uh, I listened to a lot of Alan Watts lectures uh, in terms of meditation. The second guest in a row that mentioned Alan Watts, by it. the way. Um, My buddy David Harris, I just was in the studio last week, was talking about him. No kidding, that's so Watch, awesome. Says he watches him on YouTube. Right, uh, me too. Okay. And there's a lot of resources there. Uh -huh. uh, but this is a man I came to discover uh, probably about 25 years ago and kind of got enlightened, if you will, at that time. And it turned me around. Um, okay. And it was liberating as an artist to uh, have that freedom again for myself. I think far too often, um, for me, I can put myself in a box yeah. or try to label it or try to write the same poem several times. Yeah. It gets stale and you really have to reinvent yourself every now and again. And yeah. I think that's part of the fun. Yeah. and that's I, I, So let me ask you this. So first of all, I was going to point out, I, I don't, uh, I don't subscribe to a lot of like, uh, like religious theories and stuff like that. But I will say that uh, I notice sometimes things crop up in my life. So this is the second time in a row somebody's talked about Alan Watts. So I wrote that down. That maybe means I need to listen to some Alan Watts. You know what I'm saying? Alan Watts. So is I, I don't, brilliant. you know, yeah. I, I don't follow a whole lot of theories, but that's probably a sign. That, hey, hey, you know, maybe you could benefit. That's the second person in a row that said, hey. This has really helped me, and I love it. So that's um, yeah, Alan Watts is amazing. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. I, and I and I I've listened to Alan Watts, but it's been a long time. You know, I get I get lost in Jason Bukowski for a while, of course. Ginsburg, and now I'm checking oh. out some outlaw West Coast poets, and you know I Ginsburg is uh, full circle. I need to get back. Is maybe my favorite beat because he was so far more educated in some way. Like, And I don't know if that makes a difference for everyone or anyone at any time, except yeah. for him. Yeah. He was so articulate. Yeah. And in that way, it made him a real trailblazer, maybe uh, through which some of the other beats kind of followed along. Yeah. But I think him being part of the college and stuff like that, he was just so well-spoken. And he was a speaker for his generation. I never saw him in person. I wish I would have. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh... I wish I had spent more time in my youth chasing those things you know? instead of waiting until I was kind of broken down and tired in my 40s, you know? <laughs> sure, sure. And, and, but they're going to be saying to us, we wish we would have seen you perform. Come yeah. around to our city. Come yeah. back. You know? And we need to do that. Yeah. Um, but that bring, brings me to a point. I, I think about this often, Mike. So Ginsburg especially, one of, my, one of my favorite poets in general, wrote a lot of political type stuff too. And... I would I would compare some of what we're going through today to what was going on in the '60s, mm. and some counterculture and some revolution type stuff. Mm. And I feel my influences, I guess, kind of lead me to I feel obligated to write about the times mm -hmm. sometimes. Not all the time. Sure. I mean, you write you know all kinds of different poems, but right. like I feel like every now and again, like we got a like I have a duty as an artist almost. Like, what do you what do you think about that? 
I think you have a duty to anything that's on your heart or soul True. to talk that's about. That's a good point. Okay, so yes, you're validated there, Dan. Um, when I'm having a psychic break, I need to talk about that because yeah. that's real. Yeah. Okay, and whatever our mind and our body is behind or experiencing or in front of or yeah. part of, we have an, we have a almost an obligation yeah. to put that down. Otherwise, what is the point? Like, and Ginsburg's an incredible person in many ways because he actually taught me that you should make a fool of yourself every once in a while on purpose yeah. and take a chance because society needs new things. Yeah. And that's what we're here for, yeah. uh, to shake it up Push and to go against those uh, political forces or social forces that we don't find are, are creative. You never know when you can reach someone. Yeah. Um, Case in point, I took a bunch of old poetry books to uh, Wildwood today. They have a little collective library, uh, with those little wooden boxes. And I put about 20 of them in there. And I thought, you never know when Jim Morrison's first book is going to reach some 16-year-old, and, and that yeah. person's going to go on to start a revolution in their community. I mean, talking, so there it is. Talking about an amazing poet, Jim Morrison. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's oh. something I know. You and I share a lot of the same oh, taste yeah. in music a lot. That, yeah. uh that's I always right. enjoy. You you seem like every once in a while, especially on social media, you'll get a, like on a rabbit hole of like a, a you know musician or a band. And it's kind of fun now and again to take the ride with you a little bit, yeah. which is one of my favorite things actually about social media <laughs> is staying connected to the other people. You I know? agree. Uh, just a little plug here though: the new Facebook setup sucks. Uh, they need to bring the old one back. This new one, I may never get on again. Does it ever get better when they update oh, it? Jesus! If it's not broken, don't fix it. Like we have a lot of things technologically that don't do anything for us as far as a society moving us forward it's yeah. just out there as a gadget and it's yeah. like fuck you why are you doing this we have things in place we have people that know how to manufacture shit yeah don't try to if you're not broke don't fix it and yeah. we really need that's the old fashioned value we need around yeah but i feel like capitalism doesn't allow that you know you got to keep constantly changing and upgrading and mining more information and you know the information is the problem for me. That's when I uh, get in the paranoia phase of my. And information is a commodity nowadays. Like, it why? Is. How can how can you put a value on a conversation? Yeah. How can you uh, call an opinion knowledge? I mean, we're so caught up. Yeah. I saw a meme the other day about uh, twenty odd kids sitting in a museum with their phones, and all of their heads are down, and they're texting, and there's art all yeah. around them happening that's been there and ready to be looked at and, and someone's lives changed by that experience and they're talking about it. Yeah. They're not doing it. Yeah. And that's we gotta be careful of that. That uh I, I think that's that's the good and the bad. Like there's so much information. Like there's so much connectedness. There's so much openness and like interconnectedness in the world because of social media and the internet. But then again what 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 do we what do we lose by that you know right and that's the other part I, I that's been the hard part for me this year as a poet and an artist is not being around other poets and artists this year I get it you know because we're we've been you know we work and stay home that's it like we don't have poetry readings we don't have art right. openings we don't have you know like there's been like a one one or two art shows and tents outdoors you know some <laughs> Zoom readings but it's not been. You know, it's been a weird year, Dan. Yeah, it has. Um, and people need, as we know, to fill their soul with like being around like minds. Yes. And uh, and talking and uh, putting on an open mic and getting a book idea going. Uh, mm -hmm. It's so vital. Energy is contagious. And we get yes. it. Like it's personal contact too. And at the end of the day. For me, what poetry gives that sports don't, for instance, is there's no competition in terms of I'm on this side and you're on that. I mean, we're all in the same kind of house. True. It just has m many rooms. Yeah. And oftentimes, politically and socially, of course, maybe we feel a little alike. If we mm -hmm. don't, we write about it and see what kind of response we get. Yeah, yeah. You know? All right? Uh, <laughs> let me ask you this. You were talking about uh, kind of like writing what's on your heart or what's on your mind at the sure. moment. What happens to you if you don't do that? You know, Dan, that's a great question. Um, it's like a rock of ages for me, poetry, mm -hmm. in writing and, and examining 
the self because no matter what the outcome or the reason behind it, there's always been a good reason to do it. Um, in times of distress, it's therapy. In times of jubilation, it is a, an announcement to others. Yeah. Uh, when I was eight years old, Dan, um, like many kids, I was seeking attention at school because my parents were splitting up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got in a lot of trouble, but then I started writing stories and reading them out loud, and that got a lot of good attention. Yeah. And that might have been the first brush with all this, and I thought, I need that audience. Yeah. So at the very least, at the end of the day, I need another sounding board to to understand and go, hey, you know, there's been some effort put forth here in terms of the endeavor. Yeah. You know? Have you ever, uh, and this is too personal, let me know. No. Have you ever written poetry in order to impress uh, somebody that you favored to try to impress a girl? Subconsciously, yes. Um, uh, but does the cart come before the horse? I mean, sometimes, let's be honest, we poets attract to each other because we write. And, yeah. we're, and so there's a, there's a group there that respects that idea. So just, you got that going for you, there's a commonality. Yeah. There's boys and girls on the playground, so you intermingle and stuff like that, but which came first, the chicken or the egg? Did, did I chase after them with my poetry, or did they chase after my poetry? And you know, True. And, and I've been writing for a long time. In the end, if you write good poetry, it doesn't matter, I guess. You know? Right. And that's... Uh, and, 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 and to, I guess I don't try to write for an audience. I try to write for myself now more yeah. than anything. But there have been times when, and of course, you're trying to impress a variety of people. Sure. I have, yeah. I, there, there's been times like uh, <laughs> I've tried to write a poem for an event. Yeah. Like I got asked to, I was asked to read at a uh, fundraiser for union, like uh, Memorial. Right. And I, and I did end up writing a poem. But then there's been other times, and it's just like I can't force it. Like no. I can't. You know, it just don't work. I get that. We're not you know, Hallmark, yeah, okay? Yeah. And maybe with... No, we're definitely not Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing I tell people. I'm like, please don't ask me to write about your daughter's graduation. I mean, I, and rarely do I get asked that anymore, but there have been times people want you to write them something. And I had a guy approach me at work, will you write a poem for this girl I'm trying to see? And I'm like, what? You can, <laughs> there's 50 right here. You can pick one if you'd like, but yeah, I can't yeah. really put be put on the spot about your emotions and try to put it together for you man yeah you know sorry that uh, uh so i was telling somebody recently that you were talking about you know uh like it's creative expression or what's on you know that i just just recently it dawned on me like i just kind of had like a realization um that art is simply the creative expression of oneself so all my life, like I thought, an artist was somebody that painted pictures. Mm. That's what an artist. You know, you think artist. That's yeah. Or I can see how somebody would say Prince was an artist. No, I can't. You know, that motherfucker. You know, Prince. Prince is an artist. But you know me, I, I just write poems. Like you know, like I'm just you know, I write poems. Nobody pays for poems. Like nobody wants to. Well, you know, nobody reads poems. But then I, you know, I realized too that, you know, I, but I also podcast now. I also do some art projects. You know, I. I repurpose things into some crazy whatever, you know. <laughs> but it's like, Dude. like I just realized, like, like nobody told me that when I was a kid, though, you know. Right. The distinction here for me seems to be, and it doesn't have to be a vast and wide one, but there are performers and then there are writers, and sometimes the two intermingle. Sure. You know, uh, Bob Dylan, Prince, whatever. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you're just the writer, and sometimes you're the performer, and sometimes you're the marketer of your own yeah. stuff. So there's all these hats we have to put on. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the integrity of what's on that paper, mm -hmm. that blood, should be red. Yeah. And it should be your blood. Uh, you know, I. case in point, I met a guy who writes by committee. He takes everything into his workshop and gets all the ideas and tries to appease everyone in one line. And I'm like, you didn't write that, though. It's not a manufacturing line. Go and grow. Yeah. Spread your wings. Take thesaurus.com and do that word choice change yourself because yeah. don't rely on a group or a following or your mom to say that you're good. <laughs> yeah. Rely on sure. your instinct and rely on. I, you, I can kind of tell. Can you? Can you? I imagine it's probably the same for you. Like when you're working on something or when it kind of comes together, you can kind of tell, can you? Like it's. 
Um, that's an elusive point, Dan, and, and, but that comes with growth because I'll tell you what, I, there are poems I look back on that I might have published in a vanity press uh, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. that I thought were done at the time. I look mm -hmm. at them now and I'm like, I could have... Well, that's because we evolve as artists. We evolve. Thank you. And that's... If, and if I, I feel to. like if I don't... Yes. Why then bother? I'm not... That's yes. Okay. That's yes. Um, yes. We have to get better. I have to. Well, and I always... Yeah, I, I think... I don't know. At least in my own ego-filled mania, you know, being a bipolar person. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like... My ultimate goal is to write like the all-American poem. Like you know, I gotta write whatever until I can write a poem like how, you know, which is nobody's which, ever gonna write a which poem. Which could like happen how. quite by accident. But one it day could. For you, Dan but then, anyway? then, but then, what am I gonna do then? You know, but, you know, it's like it's it's. I don't know. It's look. I'm just not there yet, so we, I gotta keep growing. You we know? know that uh, twenty or thirty percent of this is what the audience thinks, what the editor thinks, what the people out there say of it. But that other big percentage is what we just know in our heart of hearts yeah, is yeah. what we can. Do. And it's it's getting over fences. It's work. Yeah. Dan, yeah. Um, any good uh, solid work that we are involved in, whether by choice or not, sometimes we got to get involved and we got to throw ourselves into those passions. And, yeah. And this is where you come. You and I are. Uh, you know, it, it's easy to take a. Uh, a portrait and go, okay, blue color, mm -hmm. you know, what? No, because we're not so far removed. My mm -hmm. grandparents were blue color. Mm -hmm. I was blue color. I, I just still kind of are some elements of blue, yeah. Right? So yeah. the distinctions we make are not about that no. anymore. No. Okay, so people need to get over those labels mm -hmm. and those kind of fears of what's in front of us and those kind of, and that's why maybe fame or recognition is not the game for any of it. Like, I could no, care the, it, yeah, less. Like, yeah. I'd rather not. Yeah. Actually, some poets are shy. I feel like if you care talk about, if you care too much about that, you wouldn't be a poet. Right. Like, yeah, you'd be a, 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 right? a singer-songwriter, a, a painter, yeah, yeah, you know. Right, okay, something in that arena. Write novels, and, yeah. And I get that. And there's an adrenaline to be had there, too. Well, a lot of yeah. songwriters aren't even famous. Like, they, they write, they it's ghost-producing, you know. Yeah. That's There's so true. many other things that are involved before you see the face that is actually singing it. You want to yeah. hear something that sounds dated? Go back and let, and I'm just pulling up old 80s stuff. And then, so I, I forgot what this one song sounded like. It was Bruce Willis. Now, he put out an album. Oh, really? Look up in 87. It's called Respect Yourself. And this sounds Mike so Hackett going deep. bad. Why did he do it? Like, he did it because he could. Yeah. And he said, I want to do there it. There you go. It with, but it might have been the worst. <laughs> now, if you go back to... Um, uh, Eddie Murphy's version, Respect Yourself, that is fucking brilliant piece of art. Yeah. Like, he can sing, he's got the production, mm -hmm. he's got the money behind it, and yep. he sounds crisp. Yeah. And I'm like, boy, some of that stuff's dated and some's not. It's just like poetry, right, yeah. Dan? Like, yeah. some stuff indoors, Ginsburg, right? Yeah. So, I like having conversations with people that bring up Ginsburg, for oh, instance, yeah, and, and some of the heavy hitters from before, because who are we yeah. without... One day being like, I can tell you, I can tell you, I don't read a whole lot of Whitman anymore, but I know I wouldn't be the poet I am without Whitman well, because Freebirds wouldn't be here. Okay. You know, like I can, you know. I agree, and, and, and it's like a divorce with some poets. You have a long-term arrangement, and then you kind of fall away, and that's yeah. fine. Yeah, that proves you're evolving. But don't let us forget ever, Frost, yeah. Whitman. God, these guys make me cry. They're so um, pioneering. Yeah. And I love that. Like, whoever, and, you know, okay, I'm, I might break down. Jane Bradley passed away, right? I, okay. I heard. She was brave. And anyone who puts their soul on paper and writes these books and lovely novels, and that's brave. Yeah. Dude, that, there's nothing like that. That is uh, a loud voice in a small wood. Like, it's, it's something, and it's, it's enduring. And it's endearing, and it's lasting. Yeah. And so she was great. Like. Yeah, and I think that's uh, the. Ultimately, great. we get to a point I think as a writer where that's kind of our goal. 
Right. It's like, I just want my work to be remembered at some level. But you know, you know what? We can't let that overtake us either, because then we'll fight ourselves, right? we got to be true. And sure. It's like I told Grover. Like, we have good discussions, and I respect Grover so much. I love that man. I'm glad he's still living. Yeah, me and, too. And uh, for Christ's sake, He's like, got to be a mentor to me. Um, you might not agree with everything Grover ever said, but... He know like he's, you know it's from the heart. He's fighting his fight. Yeah, yeah. And he's in it. With he's his, true to himself. With his like you know, yeah. And he'll take yep. you on about it. And I love that. Like that's yeah. honesty. Like that's bravery. Yeah, he didn't hide from it either. Right. It's, you know. And so you're gonna disagree with a, a fiery, passionate, honest person once in a while, and that's better because you learn something. Yeah. By the discussion. I, I, I feel like any artist, no matter the level of agreement, when they put so much heart into their art. You know, you can't help but admire it. Dude, that's you know, like, like, the things about Grover that I love are, like, he's unflinching. Right. He's true to himself. Like, yeah. he's just raw and, like, here I am in your face. Right. And you got to admire that there's an artist that, right. that brave, you Absolutely. Know? And that's... And that's what it's about. Like, that's why we respect each other around yeah. here. Because um, it ain't no small thing to keep putting it out there. Yeah. And, uh, and having it thrown back in your face you really gotta love the hurdles oh yeah and uh dig the process and get something out of it yeah. it's just like going to work it's just like working out it's just like making love i mean you gotta get in and give and take yeah and you wrestle with it right hopefully um, you get better at it, when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, hopefully i wrote a poem uh and it ends uh it was about a breakup and it's called uh i forget what it's called anyway it's about a breakup and it's short I wish I would have brought it, but it's about a guy spending a year in his life wrestling with Robert Lowell and the wolves and finding himself and skiing ugly. And uh, it's all those details. Like, you got to grapple with these yeah. people you don't understand sometimes. Sometimes they're your worst enemy. For me, if you would have asked me 30 years ago, Bob Dylan, I would have said, fuck you, that's sick. Now, I think he's the best. Like, he's my man. Like, he's yeah. still kicking and he's... He's been an American icon. He might American be the greatest poet of all time. Fuck might that, be, dude. man. Dude, might let's be. not dispute that. Because yeah, I, mean, that's, I think being the oldest, well, wisest I mean, could, grandfather, he's, yeah. you know, for me... Like, greatest he, living poet, for like sure. Maybe Woody Guthrie's a little bit before my time yeah, and, but, and some I of can, these other legends, but I mean, the world yeah, needs Bob Dylan. The world dude. needs a Woody Guthrie and right Bob now. Bob Dylan uh, did it right yeah. all the way along. Yeah. Didn't let it swallow him. He's still alive. Changed music. Forever. Changed everything Electric. many times, yeah. right? Different lifetimes. Yeah. Under misunderstood, understood, in gauche, out of gauche. Here he is, motherfucker. Yeah. Don't fuck with me. I'm still doing fucking it. immortal. Still doing it. And I remember, That's a new album. I just listened to it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's now, pretty damn good. I saw an interview with him, uh, a throwback from the '80s, and he was talking on 60 Minutes about how he made a pact with the devil, and I was like, "This is fucking great." Mm -hmm. You know, the guy's got everyone hoodwinked. And he's still kicking, and he's still the king of it, and he doesn't let it, like... He's not Elvis, you know? He's not showy. Now, there's a place for Elvis. Trust me, I go back to Elvis, and I'm like, okay. The man had some rhythm. He knew how to put it on, right? But this is Bob Dylan. This is different. This is like a didn't, life. They just gave Bob Dylan a, uh, a Nobel Prize, didn't they? That's right. Or a Pulitzer. It's something like that, yeah. One of and the, he didn't even show up to get it. Like yeah, he had, He's like, oh, I got a gig, sorry. And he sent Patty Smith. That's who's so a legend in their own right. Yeah. But like he's like, ah, I got a gig. Sorry yeah. guys. <laughs> he did write a speech afterwards. I he think. did, yeah. But God but love that's him. like the most Bob Dylan thing. God ever. love him, man. I mean so, speak, speaking of before we get too deep into this, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about Mike Hackney. Oh shit. All right? <laughs> like I love Bob Dylan. Who's he? So okay. you've had some success. I've I've got books. You've had books published. Let's talk about them. Okay. Um so, the theme of these books, for me, would be uh, Personal Growth 101. Mm -hmm. Each book represents a different chapter of my life that had to be worked through. And yeah, I can see my maturity level as I'm working through things and what is working and what isn't. And um, they were awesome experiments, Dan. There's nothing like that. I will say that uh, in many ways, looking back... I made some freshman mistakes and kind of jumped the gun on my publishing. Right now my attitude is, I'm going for chapbook contests exclusively. I don't want to go for another vanity shot for me because personally I just need to raise the bar and get competitive. Yeah. Um, 
I want to be out there in the big mags, dude. And um, that's not to slight a small mag at all. I love small mags. That's where oh, America yeah. works yeah. and breathes and lives. But I'm pushing myself. Mm -hmm. I've broken away from some workshops. Mm -hmm. I've been in workshop all my life. I mean, I was in yeah. college in 87 doing workshops, and they've been part of my life. They're, they're important and useful. But at one point, you got to say, i got to launch off and start doing this shit myself because I'm on a learning curve here. Mm -hmm. And I need to work my way through draft 12 through 15 instead of relying on uh, Joe next to me at the workshop to uh, fix my word choices and, and take care of my comma splices because I'll never grow. Yeah. And if I were stuck at home in COVID, yeah. can I write good poetry because I don't have a fledgling group around me mm -hmm. to pick me up and boost me and wipe off my ego. So you're really in a cave. Mm -hmm. And you get challenged because it, it should be a private sport at, at many levels. It doesn't have to be a social mm -hmm. uh, group. In other words, you can get caught up in just the social aspect and not do the work. Yeah. And I've been guilty of that, and I've gone there, and it's fun, and that's you part learn of why I love, stuff. That's part of why I love poetry. I mean, it's, you know, the, the social aspect is, is. nice because you're around people that are similar to you, that are, have common pursuits, right. and, you know. Like, there's there's a... I guess a common bond there, you Absolutely. know, amongst, even amongst poets and other artists, you know. Absolutely. So, you know. I'm just pushing myself. I want to get a, uh, I've got, um, in many ways, two chapbooks ready to go. And uh, so I'm just polishing right now. Yeah. And kind of completing. And I think that's a good way to go out on this year. And kind of start a new next year with writing all new shit. Speaking we'll of competing, I did not get win the rattle prize again this year. I submitted again for the ten thousand dollar poetry prize, the single poem that wins ten grand, and there's five runner ups. God damn! It's like twenty bucks, and you get a rattle subscription. I do it every right. year. I once again I lost. I didn't win. <laughs> but uh, but every year, every year the poems I sing get better. Every year, you know what I'm saying? So no, but that's that's like my my that's goal. One of your goals, one, yeah. One of my I want to sneak a poem into rattle yeah, eventually. You know what I mean? Like that's like you know what? Like no. it's. To be honest with you, if Rattle never publishes me, no, whatever. But you know what? That's you know, what, that's like I've got to, for. I've got to feature Reed in some pretty, pretty big lineups, right. and some pretty legendary underground poetry festivals, and like that. What more validation than you need than to read with like your hero? No, I agree. You know what I mean? Like we it's, all have these aspirations. Yeah. Like I want to get in Mid American Review. Sure, and that's. Okay, and they've been hanging on to one of my poems for a little over a year now, so they may be seriously looking at it. I'm not going to get my hopes up, but yeah. that's a goal of mine. Yeah, that's sure. a private kind of, you know, aspiration. Yeah. You shoot for those, uh, and it could we be We should, anything. we should. You're right. I mean, that's, we got to, I mean, that's, there has to be some challenge or there's no growth. Right, thank you. So, let me ask you this. So yeah. You, even in your books, you talked about, like, chapters and personal growth. Right. How much of your life experience <laughs> do you think pours into your work <laughs> how much does it influence it it's a chicken and egg thing dan it's like uh they both wash together okay there's not a separation between mine too and that's right and know. there shouldn't be it's so natural and on on any given day of the week i'm a couple hours into my files mm -hmm. doing something meddling fooling tweaking uh writing notes. so you work you work every day i do and okay. so it's so you're a lunch bucket show up with your lunch ready to work <laughs> uh, yeah i because, love that about you mike and, and well dan tell me you're not blue collar right exactly that's a that's that's a midwestern work ethic dude it's about the work yeah. i swear to god like every batter is going to hit one out of the park once in a while they just got to yeah. show up yeah. right okay yeah. so it's a numbers game in many ways it's an experiment but you got to stay fresh yeah. You walk away for a month or two, and it's like, wow, really, I'm going to have to learn to dance again. It's like, really? Uh, so there's always something to do for me. Uh, what's, the, what's the longest you've ever, you went as a writer without writing? I would say at least in the past five or six years, there really hasn't been a day or two that I've gone. Because I don't feel right in my yeah. soul. Um, now, I have that luxury. I have that luxury because uh, right now I'm in a situation where I, I work uh, fewer hours than your average American and I don't have kids and I don't have a lot of debt. Uh, I do have this luxury life, but I swear to God that's not, um, that's not to say anyone shouldn't set aside two or three hours a day, no matter how busy they are. Yeah. You're not too busy. And it's like I tell my brother who's too busy for me because he's a car salesman, I'm like, you're not too busy. You make mm -hmm. time for what's important. Mm -hmm. No matter how many hours you're working, 
you're the you're a testament of that, right? You, oh, I, I, you're burning the candle. I, once again, that's chicken and egg, though. Right. My wife and I talk about this all the time. <laughs> Would I be who I am if the house wasn't on fire all the fucking time? You know what right. I mean? Like, well, if, right, if, exactly. if I wasn't working seventy hours a week, if I didn't have that resistance in my creative world, would I be the artist? I, you know, chicken and our, egg, chicken and egg. Our elements, you know, how much of my work right. in my real, you know, my job that pays the bills bleeds into my art. Right. Can oh, separate, it's who right, I am. Exactly. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And you know, that's a real Eastern thought, Dan. Um, in many ways, the Buddhist culture don't buy into like this is my religion, but this is my philosophy, but this mm -hmm. is my job, but mm -hmm. this is my... They don't compartmentalize like that. Their whole this life is, is a flow. Yes. It's like, I'm me. And I, I'm, I'm and starting, I'm by the way, this podcast is a manifestation of that. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of what I've learned is I've, I've, spent, I've spent the last five years trying to figure out what can I do to do more of what I want to do in life and less of what I have to do. Right. Okay? So I work... I probably average 60 hours a week. Right. Okay? It's a lot of hours. Yes. And then to be an artist and to do the things I do. And that's, you know, whatever. But, it, it, so I've been thinking, all you know, for years. How can I? So then I started thinking, you know, I love podcasts. My, you know, my friends and I have been talking about podcasts. And you're like, let's start a podcast for years. And then, so this is a collaboration of all the things I love. We're going to start a little publishing company. You know, we're going to work with poets. I've got a Zoom, business Zoom account. Eventually, and I'm going to be inviting, talking to you about this real soon, Mike Hackney. Right. Uh, eventually, I'd like to do some Zoom readings. Nice. Maybe with some singer songwriters and poets <laughs> mixed together. Yeah. And maybe like try to try to figure out a way to like get some other artists like using using our studio to promote other artists. You know, but like just all the things I love <laughs> and combine it into one thing. And here's this podcast in the studio. You know, and it's fun, and they're making it it's, easy for us to play with these toys oh, yeah. these days. I look back on our lives. You know, CDs came along, and phones came along. And oh man, we get to I remember our first CD player. You remember your right? first CD player? I remember the first CD I bought. It was Peter Gabriel solo stuff. Ooh. Okay. It was used. My first CD player I bought. <laughs> I bought for twenty dollars at a pawn shop. And it connected with AV wires or whatever. Right. It's the red, white sound wire, right. audio wires mm -hmm. to the stereo. Right. You know, it was like a it was like a VCR. Removed. It was like the size removed. of a VCR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you had like you could, it like one thing came out, and it was like the size of a VCR, <laughs> and it had this little. I paid twenty bucks. Right. But I was like the only person in my family that had one. It's you know, what I'm like I was yeah, living. You, you know. Ahead of yeah. The game, Pawn bro. shop CD player. You wanted to be you. I cannot. I think. I can't remember what my first CD was, but I think it might have been. Hank Williams Jr. CD, maybe. Nice. Maybe. Dude, Country Boy Camp. But coming full circle, I just guy. bought a record player last year. I love it. Full circle. Nice. I own three rec four records, Act. So what happened was Denise Phillips gifted me a uh, a uh, collector's edition Bukowski record. <laughs> oh, it came no. out last year. It came out last year for Indie Bookstore Day. Wow. And she only got one to sell. Uh huh. And I didn't get there early enough to get it. But well, then she had another one come available, and she gifted it to me oh, for my wow. birthday. Hey, so I'm like, hey, fuck, hey. now i got to buy a record player. Right. I've been rich, so... Gave you an excuse I, to get I've one. Lived, I've lived a pretty crazy life. Yeah. I was homeless wow. in my 20s. Me too, bro. And because of that, like, I've never been one to collect stuff. Me too. Except for books and art. Like, I can't... I get it. But anyway, like, I just don't need stuff. So I didn't yeah. want a record player, because now i got to buy records. <laughs> and records take up a lot of space. Now you got, you know <laughs> what I'm do. saying? And I've got iTunes and Spotify. i got unlimited wealth of music on my cell phone. Right. right. So now i got a record, so I bought a record player. So then I'm at the record store, you know, and I buy Working Man's Dead, my favorite all-time <laughs> album, and I get a Janis Joplin album, and I get, and I'm like, you know, whatever, Dude, man. Records are, records are cool. Here. Yeah, Full right. circle, I'm back Couple to being 12 here. again with a record player, you know. <laughs> but it's nice. No, it's, uh, and... So how much how much does music influence your work? Dude, do you listen to music while you're working, or absolutely, do you? Absolutely, always. Whether I'm editing, writing, whatever. You know, I talked to my friend Jessica. She says uh, it's distracting. I said, not for me. Somehow it's in stimulating. So do you listen to instrumental music? Anything. Okay. You so put, I, I do. Do you notice a difference between using them. instrumental music over like words? Um, it, it depends on the nature of the poem I'm trying to work on. Like if it's jittery and and uh, bumpy and fast, I'll listen to something like that, okay. uh, rock or something, yeah, yeah. CDC even. If it's uh, if it's a more subdued piece or needs a formal structure or long stanzas mm -hmm. or whatever, I'll put on some classical or something. So you CDC relate instrumental or, music to like calm music. I do like the mood of what it translates to me. And okay, because I don't, inst I, instrumental music to me doesn't like, 
I don't immediately think of like calm music uh -huh. because of the music that I listen to is instrumental music. Right. You know what I mean? It's a lot of it's really heavy. Sure. So that's why well, I was I guess wondering. I was thinking but of classical when you mentioned instrumental, instrumental music. Life, yeah, that makes sense though. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. 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 But Matt, Matthew Rempe liked the electronic, like dance music right. and stuff like that. Another local poet buddy of ours. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. It was fun. It's hypnotic. 80s synth wave and stuff like that. I know nothing about it, but it's hypnotic. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, 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 stay yeah. close to the mics. We gotta yeah. learn. We gotta learn better mic control. Yeah. I'm super loud. No, I'm yeah, super loud. Shit. Shit. Like I can hear me. Some of them really loud. Headphones. Our producer, some of well, I can hear both of you. Right, we, just as loud as me. Trusting face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's trusting. I, well, no. Hey, I need. I told you, I need to shave. So yeah, let's not let's not get into an ugly contest here. I don't want to lose that. He said, "I'm a pork chop." So. Speaking of listening to music, so what? So right. what is your process? Do you, okay, good. Do you carve out like the same time every day? Do you have like a rigid schedule? Are you like a, I'm gonna sit here, get myself together, listen to this music? Like, how do you write? How do you work? So, the initial writing process for me is different as it is different for you, sure, and him, and but I like to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Dan is fun. Me too. I love hearing other people. So let's talk about Adrian, my good friend, for a minute. We have I love Adrian. One of my well, we points. have conflicting um, ways of looking at the world. So not I don't mean politically. I mean yeah. the way we write poems. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, he sets out in his mind with some thoughts, some uh -huh. lines, and he works on them in his head. Uh -huh. And then when he sits down, he's pretty sure he's got ninety percent of it in his head, ready and memorized, and he can type it out. Uh -huh. That's cool. That's a cool process. Mine's more like a needle on a haystack. I go for the uh, associative and free associative fast, don't stop, write four or five pages of bullshit mm -hmm. and seek through it for your feelings, your gems, your lines. It's more like putting together a jigsaw for me. Mm -hmm. And that process, whether quicker or more effective or not, doesn't matter. Yeah. It's the fun of the process for yeah. me. It's like building a Lego house or a sandcastle. It's like, yeah. well, you didn't do it the way I did. Yeah, but it still looks pretty cool. I look, so, at, I look at it. Still, it's still a sandcastle. Right, still you know, yeah. The way I see art is it's just two pieces of art put together to make another one. You know what I mean? So if you're just creating little tiny pieces of art and then putting them together, it's like a collage. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and Absolutely. it's yeah, and that's how I make music. You know what I mean? And here's the thing about narrative thread and like making sense of things. Mm -hmm. Our subconscious. I I just put this together on my own. I'm not sure I'm even talking. Uh, you know. Oh, um, no, that yeah. happens though. Revelation. Right. <laughs> the blue we collar gospel. We all, we all do this. Um, so. The subconscious will take care of what the main thrust of the story is. It'll because we're natural storytellers. We do write, even when we talk to each other, yeah. a beginning, a middle, and an end to keep it interesting, yeah. and then we yeah. put a tail on it. So, don't when when I sit down to write, I don't worry about that structure of begin. How do I begin? I'm like, no, it just happens. That'll just happen yeah. when I yeah. work out what I dreamed about last night in 3D. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I want to talk about that, and then I want to talk about the cat did this, or sometimes an image will set me off but I have no idea where it's going to take me yeah. it's Alice in Wonderland mm -hmm. and that's the fun of it for me that's that's one thing when I write I normally will get a phrase or something stuck in my head yeah or I'll get the bones to something or an idea and then I'll eventually sit down after whatever to length of time and I'll write it down or I'll put it in my cell phone so I won't right it. and then you know then I'll get home and I'll work on it later and sometimes it goes completely left field, and I have no idea how it's going to end. Sure. Sometimes I can stick to the theme I had originally. Right. I guess, you know, and it's sometimes I'll work on it for seven or eight days, and it just don't fit. It don't fit. Got it. And I'll, like, set it down, and I won't do shit for two days, and all of a sudden, something happens, and I'm like, oh, yeah. 4.30 in the go, morning. And I'll go, yeah, and I'll go back, and it's like, there it is. You know, and it's like, it's like, maybe it's because I'm my fucking bowler. I don't know, no. but it's like. You know, but then other times I'll sit down and it's like free flow, bam, yeah. there it is. And those are like, sometimes those are good ones, and sometimes later you'll go back and be like, ooh, I need to tighten But sometimes that, up. that old subconscious is yeah. like brewing something. One thing I know for sure, when I get them, I got to put them down. Yeah. Because I can't, I, I'm not like Adrian. There are some challenges. Like, I can't remember shit, and like, if I <laughs> I lose it every time, if I don't wake up at 2 a.m. and put it down or something, it's gone. I'm the same way. When it's, something's hot. I pull off the side of the road, write that yeah. shit down if I have to. I mean, yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. Voice the text, yeah. Because here's the thing: I truly believe it's another chicken and egg story. Like, 
did this impulse come along before I was existing, or did I create this impulse? Yeah. So it's always out there, Dan, and that's why the work ethic comes in to play, because if you're not at the desk, it's rarely going to come talk to you, because it knows you, you thwart it. Yeah. If you're at the fucking desk, even if nothing much happens, yeah. it's going to tap you on the shoulder, it's going to slap you, it's going to do whatever it can sometimes when it's ready. Yeah. And you got to be there with that paper. Now, and, and now, <laughs> now I, I, I also, I, I do something creative every day. Like, that's, I have to. Like, yeah. that's like my, you know, how you got like some five things a day you do. Like, that's one of my five things. Right. I have to do something creative. Okay. It doesn't have to be right. You know, I could, maybe it's a podcast. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Maybe it's making a new logo, whatever, you know, I got to do something creative every day, right? Yeah. Oftentimes it's writing. Now, when I when I show up to write every day, it's not necessarily at a desk from 7 to 8 p.m. Sure. It might be while I'm getting my first cigarette break at work while the sun's right. rising over the landfill outside the factory. Sure. You know, and it might be I'm looking at something I'll write down the line. All right. And then it might be a lunch break, I'm sitting there and I'm, and I'm just like reading it, you know, at lunchtime and I'm looking at it. Maybe it's another like stanza. You know, and then maybe it's when I come home after dinner, you know, after dinner I sit down and tell, you know, I hear a song and it pops off. Yeah. And maybe three days later I finally sit down for an hour and I put it together and I work at it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it's, you know, it's, and I think that's one of the reasons why I haven't been good at finishing a manuscript for like a novel. is because that's sit down everyday work. Yes. And I'm getting a little bit better because it's important. You know, I've got some stories I want to tell. Dan, I have a luxurious... That's one thing I've always admired about you is you are so consistent week in, week out, new stuff. Whether it's... Poly, like, you'll even say, hey, I'm not sure I'm done with this yet, yeah. but we're this, you know. Yeah. And that's... I've always admired, like, you every single, you know. I'm blessed to have that time. Yeah. And I'm blessed to um, have... The, but you make it, too. You make that I time. Do. Like, there's plenty of other things you can You're do. You're right. That's you know. true. Um, it is part of me. Uh, so much that I don't know how to separate it and, out from other things, and you you know what I mean. And, and I think that's, <laughs> I, for me, that's how I realized, that's when I realized I was, quote unquote, an artist. It's gotcha. It's when, that impulse. what the fuck am I going to do if I don't? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I don't, so I'll go sometimes, not on purpose ever, but I'll go two or three weeks without writing something. Yeah. And I, and I get pretty restless and pretty, you know, it's it's... Then it explodes. I guess, you know, it, it, I just have to. I guess gotta, it's just part of who I am. Gotta do it. And I don't know, even if I don't try, like, it's just, you know, I, like, I don't know, I'm a poet. You know, it's like, well, I wanted to be one when I was, I wanted to be one when I was 12, you know, and I here I am, it. like, this I is, you know. It. And I remember, I, I'm sure, and let me get this straight, my memory starts to slip as I slip into the 50s, uh, but I think I, we met at the trunk the first time maybe I heard you read or the sub shop either the trunk or the sub shop and I was like damn I love this because you're a breath of fresh air and you're like an honest you know sometimes for me academic cir circles can get like Stuck. stale yeah boring for me and I, I I'm a bore too and then I need some I would think so my, I need new faces. I have grown to appreciate classical music. I've grown to appreciate academic poetry. So I always tell everybody poetry has genres just like music. You know? Yeah. You got your outlaw country poetry. Sure. You got your punk rock poetry. You got, you know, and it's, so academic poetry, I, I just feel like it's just, it's real polished. Like there's not a lot of hiccups and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's beautiful. Yeah. It's art. Yeah. And I've grown to appreciate it. I've grown to, to like a lot of it. Yeah. But, I'm a factory worker. I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when I read Bukowski when I was a teenager, sure. I was like, what so the he's a fuck? Man. Yeah, you know. Right? Like, it's his, he's a he's street full smart. laureate of the American low life, you know? Was, well, he's street smart. And yes. He, he can tell you things in a lingo that your academic people don't understand. They don't yes. get it. They're not yes. even that aspect. And that's, and by the way, I was severely disappointed last year. Rattle, speaking of Rattle, I know. published a Rust Belt edition of their magazine. And out of maybe the 14 poets published, 12 of them were professors. <laughs> and I was really disappointed yeah. that there were so many professors writing in a Rust Belt edition. Well, that, um, you know, like mm. I can think of 10 poets, right. John Freeman, Adrian Lyme, you know, Michael Grover, talk Mike about Hackney, Johnny McIntyre. You know, sure. like talk about Rust Belt poets. These sure. are, sure. talk about Rust Belt, their poems yeah. are so rusty, you know. That's right. Like, I was a little disappointed in that. So I guess that's my... 
my take on academia, I guess, is well, they shouldn't speak for all of us, you know? Okay, um, I'm going to stick up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's easy to distinguish like that in a black and white term, but as we all know, there's um, there's exceptions to every friggin' rule. Good arts, right. good art. So, like, you got Wallace Stevens and you got T.S. Eliot who were oh, yeah. desk clerks and bankers, and then you've got, you know, Frost, and you got Whitman who was out yeah. on the frontier, and you've got Ginsburg, so you've you got everything, and you see good and bad in each. Yeah. I mean, let's not sell E. E. Coming short. No, 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 and, and I don't. Yeah, I don't mean to. He was a linguist. I don't mean to. Yeah, and that's but everybody knows that. I'm not, ever, no, you never know. I hate it when someone says, he doesn't look the poet type. Oh. Well, what the fuck does a poet type look like, god yeah. damn it? Yeah. You mean you have some vision in your head for what Pukowski or, you know, Picasso or... or I, I actually Dali wrote a poem like, about how quirky fuck poets you, look. Man. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. that's like saying, I don't know what that's like saying, but... I, you know, it's... it's A poet, uh, an artist is... And you can't stereotype. You never. You know, you just can't. And, I've met some, <laughs> some pretty uh, highly educated... You know, very academic poets uh -huh. that just blew my fucking socks. Sure. Right? You know, I'm like, it, good art's good art, Joel man. Lemon. Period. Mm -hmm. yeah. Joel Lemon, Jesus. Barden, you know. Barden, all, yeah, Jesus, those, yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, they write stuff that just kind of reaches out and grabs you and smacks you around a little Barden bit. Barden was That's, a fresh you know, surprise when I heard him read poetry, because oh, yeah. I didn't really hear of him, and I'm like, here comes Lemon, and then here comes Barden. I'm like, I know he teaches well, I instantly English. wanted to be friends with both of them, because like, they love Steinbeck, like, too. God like me. damn. Here's a voice that carries. I mean, he, you know. He was, so he was a fresh surprise. Yeah, yeah. I love it when I'm surprised. Yeah, absolutely. That's what art should be. Yeah. It's a surprise for you. Something yeah. that hasn't been done or seen. Or... And there's... and there's. So I, I, I guess my... Uh, I don't know if it's my version of what good art is, but there, there are other artists that I get jealous of. Mm -hmm. You know, there are spoken word artists that are great, and I'm, and I, I'm just not a spoken word artist. I'm just yeah. not... You know, I've written some pieces that maybe could be, but I'm just not... That's not my style. Right. And I get envious. Yeah. But there's good academic poets, and I'm like, sure. man, I wish I could write that beautiful. Right. You know, and and that's that's true for just about any kind of art. You know, it's like there's always something that somebody writes, and you're like, man, I wish I could have wrote that. Well, you know, and it's like, it's funny you'd say that, Dan. Uh, just like, why would I ever write a love poem after you read Garcia Lorca? You know, or uh, not Garcia Lorca, but Pablo Nareda. For you know? sure. Naruto's got it, and, and so I read this poem uh, maybe for the second or third time the other day by Robert Haas. And it's called uh, Meditation at Lagunas or something. And I'm like, there's a poem I wish I fucking wrote. And I'm going to sit around all fucking year and try to emulate that a little bit and go, can I even get close? Yeah. And he made it seem effortless. That's the thing about it. Like, you know, you can write a 12-line poem and you know you've rearranged every fucking word in that 400 times. Yeah. And it, but someone's going to say that looked easy. Yeah. And you're going to say, well, this is what I did. And yeah. it wasn't easy. It wrestled me. And it, it was cantankerous. So that, speaking of that, I always right? kind of prickle a little bit because of that. Mm -hmm. When you'll meet somebody and they're like, oh, you got a gift. <laughs> well, fuck you. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I don't think you realize how much effort I right. put into this. Like, this yeah. is, you know. This was a plan I had It might not work like day. much, right. but this is, you Thank know. You. I worked on this for 12, you okay. know. And it calls to personality, too. It's yeah. like. Did we grow ourselves and our own brains and our own likes and dislikes? Pretty much, we did. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. We are yeah. here. Here yeah. we are. And this is the, the shirt I put on today. Yeah. So fuck you. I didn't dress up in someone else's suit, right? Yeah. So, the, the, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, it's genuine. That's yeah. the connection. Yeah. And for me, with great freedom comes great responsibility. Like, you got to water that motherfucker. Yeah. And you got to trim the bushes every day. If you don't day. work at it, you're not going to grow. And that's, that's up for to sure. you. Yeah, yeah. But um, wherever you are, in your career, you should be trying to get a little better or, or pushing yourself to talk about something different. Even. Yeah. Yeah. So I was at Winter Wheat. You know Winter Wheat. Yes. I, I, I never make it. I always it's work It's virtual all the time. this year, Dan. October? Probably catch Coming up this next November. Week? It's usually the November? first of November, okay. and it's virtual. You can pick a class or two and just sit in. This is what I'm starting to learn about, love about COVID times. Anyway. Because I love the ease of access. So talk about being inspired. I, I met a lady down there who set up a workshop a few years back. This is when I wrote the Downturn book, uh, and it's a book about my bipolar experience. Mm. And it's, it's only available in the U.K., so I don't try to sell it around here. Mm -hmm. Anyway... She said, 
write on a really deep topic for 30 days or write 30 Ooh. poems. Yeah. And you wrestle with that. And someone came to me, it might have been the girlfriend I had at the time, she's like, why not strawberries? I'm like, I'm looking for something a little deeper. <laughs> and uh, so we weren't together long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, I went for the bipolar jugular, Dan, and I really yeah. spilled it about that shit. And it was therapeutic and it was yeah. fun. And that demon rode its own rides. Yeah. And put me in places I didn't know was going to happen. Do you, do you ever fun. write poems in that vein that you don't share much or you only share with select audiences? Or Like, I, I, I try to so. be open, but there's some things, you know, that I don't know. I can disguise it if it's too ugly. Yeah. I try to. And put it in a matter Not too ugly, just sometimes too open. Maybe. Maybe. But then again, isn't that our responsibility sometimes? Yeah, I mean, sometimes. That's, so, that's the thing I'm always pushing, I guess, is the more freedom, you uh, know? I, I'm writing more towards the uh, editors now. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean in terms of what they want specifically. I mean in terms of how polished they want to look at something. Yeah. And th it doesn't need to be looked at again. It's easy to read. It's Yeah. There's, there's a flow to to what you're doing and it looks professional. Sure, yeah. And there's so much to be said for those first experimental phases. Uh, uh -huh. The writing needs to be raw and fucking flip oh, on yeah. its head, right? Well, it has to start somewhere, yeah. got to. It, it could look like a car yeah. wreck, as you said, for the first couple days or months. I might not say polished, but I always say my work needs to be tightened a little. Yeah, yeah. Same difference. Sure. You know, yeah. Even, even my work, you know. Even, and sometimes. Even the raw work needs tightened. It needs to it needs be polished. loosened yeah. up. Sure. To be honest with you, I've killed some poems and trying to stragulate them into form. Yeah. And I'm like, uh oh, I lost the trend. I lost the feeling. Yeah. So you gotta be careful. There. Yeah. Did you bring some poems? I did. Would you like to read some? <laughs> sure. I I'd like to hear some. Uh, that'd be great. And, I haven't uh, heard a lot of poetry. I'll make poems you want me. It's life for me. Hey, it's up to you. This is our show, man. It's we. It's. I brought four or five. Read them. A couple of them. That's here. But, That's uh, here. We can read them and talk about them, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah. Let's, let's do this. And, and do you want to have like a question and answer between, or you just want me to read straight through? Or yeah, you what you, whatever you're comfortable with. Whatever I feels right. I don't care. You interject whenever. Okay. I Deal. want to, like, yeah. Yeah. And if you got something you want to talk out on in between, we'll That's do cool. it. That's cool. Let's All do right. that. It'll be fun. I'm not going to give too much introduction. I'm just going to read through these. Um... But this is what I'm kind of trying to send out these days. I've got stacks and stacks of uh, stuff that's getting there. And I want to end the year off in uh, sending this collection out. So, Dreamers. I'm incoherent in my black beret. Stack hay boots dutifully marching along the strange barn of chances. Here I find sacred junkyard wounds and the justifiable lines of all poems yet to be made and gallant horses in sizable meadows. The horses choose a loose ink to paint away the scars of time. They disappear into something real, eternal, and lasting, and I join them. Dreamers. Hmm. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I don't know. I'll just keep reading. Okay. Go Does ahead. Good? It's here. Yeah. <clears throat> this is one I'm sending to Mar. Okay. Mid American. So let's see. <laughs> see if they want to pick this one up. I don't know. Uh, this is a stretch for me. It's a little bit longer. Okay. It's called "While Eyes Were Averted." The victim fell hard. Repeatedly raped on church house steps one night when Rudy got out of hand. Just an hour before, and oh so eloquently, he tipped the endless liquor bottle into a deafening, cocksure, so called enlightened mouth hole, which would not shut. He prattled endlessly. His dancing was shameless. He flung loose bills on the cherry wood bar with abandon. He rammed the jukebox with his dumpy ass, jolting Bob Seeger to a momentary halt. By and by, Rudy dismissed himself to the urinal, dissolving completely from our sight just after Jody May removed a greasy white apron, wiped sweat from her prominent brow, and headed out to start a red-hot Camaro. Under a starlit mid-July swelter, the screen door slamming behind her with a startling finality, her shadow followed her down three shallow steps and away. 
We wondered about Rudy's disappearance for only a few brief moments. A lewd joke was cracked in his honor. He'd left a cat diesel power hat on a tabletop with a half a pack of menthols. By and large, he was forgotten about. One or two ill-natured grumbles emanated from the hooch hounds still planted on pivoting antique bar stools. Folks went back to their billiards and pinball. The music resumed, shaking the cedar walls and the dilapidated, mismatched windows. We must have let him slip out the back undeterred while eyes were averted. Two. Two teenage boys were said to have stood witness behind a darkened window of the general store as the sobbing scene uncoiled that night. They saw the big knock, the little lady down. They heard several muffled panic noises before the big man was over top of her. They told us that then they turned away in shame returning to their beers and games of chance in some far-off corner of a backlit room with a tiny radio playing, a lamp lit by a solitary bulb. Sure enough, smears of blood appeared on the church house steps come sunrise, a few drops on the wooden banister, too. All too proud farmhands said not a word as they passed the church house in preceding hours making way to banks and auction houses uptown. I too stood silent, hands in pockets, guilty as a Wall Street banker. We had surely let him slip out the back, undeterred while eyes were averted. All that week and through the next, the air was thick with grief. Mm. All right. Nice. <laughs> Damn. We got a couple more. Man. All right. That was heavy. Thanks. Um, so this one uh, came out of nowhere. Like, this taught me how to live, if that makes any sense. I didn't rule this one. Mm -hmm. Came out of the blue. My fever dream. I seek a strange frontier. Yellow lion and purple daisy cohabitating in the pangs of my tender, boundless heart. The valence has been drawn over show tents for evening, yet the songs of carnival whores, laughter from ape houses, and screams of sideshow freaks come at me in phantasms. I rent a small, wooden shelter in the village of mercenaries, negotiate with primitive gurus for f rare books and kindling, form packs with sacred angels, and draft poems by firelight. I abandon barbarism and kneel in the temple of sacred art, the yellow lion still hungry, the yellow daisy at my side in full bloom just beyond the village gates. Wow. Uh, this one, I was fortunate enough to have this one published in a brand new journal uh, called Passengers. Uh, they picked this one up this year. It made Congratulations. me uh, feel really good about this one. It, it told me how to live. Search deserted. How will you handle this willful, endless blue nocturne when it drops a veil over your delicate maroon ski coat? The koans, which nature often writes, buried profoundly beneath dangling anorexic arms of wood, patches of land covered in permafrost diamonds. Like a snow leopard hunting the timid mountain goat, you search for answers, as in every other season. Yet even old crow knows the certainties of the cold and has flown. Hmm. Uh, one more. This is about my mom. This is maybe the most recent poem I've written. Uh, I'd be a good candidate for Freud. He would want to study my brain in terms of mom. Uh, that's why I have problems with women. Let's more revelations on the okay? blue-collar gospel I'm hour. still single because of my mom, probably. So, um, yeah. Uh, so I've heard her to thank for all the nightmares in my life. Anyway, this is a casual note to that. It's uh, called Nothing Much Grows. 
Cuckoo clock on the wall chimes hello. Half awake now, I hear the droning of TV news. The weather report sounds bleak for several days now. From morning's rough grip I rise, I take tea, then spot my aging mother, nude, over-medicated, lost between food pantry and an open cellar door. She has come to live with me through the long winter. I shake the image, ambivalent and slightly annoyed by this unwelcome invader who defiles my quiet home. Long ago, this woman walked out of two young lives, left my infant brother and I as we lay snug in our beds, rejecting the budding flowers of her own body's design. These days, nothing much grows in her cool shadows. I can only bid her back to the darkness from which she came. Hmm. That's my Halloween uh, love poem to my mother. Thanks. <laughs> Very nice. You know, <laughs> you, bag. you get a fucking way with imagery. <laughs> Thanks. That's incredible. Uh, like, it just really is. Like it, And you that, do have a flow that's just yeah. unique to Thanks, you. Thanks, man. Like, I, I uh, read these in my head. I go over them several weeks. I post them on my wall uh, and fix them every day and fix them up in terms of how they sound loud. Yeah. Some people miss doing that. Some yeah, I, I definitely, that's one of the ways when I when I get close to where I think it's getting close to done, I'll read it out loud. Yeah. And, like, the places where I hang up is where I work at, you right. know, and it's like, it, that's definitely one of the final stages of, you know, yeah. getting to an editor or it's got to sound like music Not somehow. that, yeah. one of my, I don't know, one of my bad habits is I'll go back like and read a poem for five years ago and want to work on it more. Yeah. And, I, and that's, I'm trying to break that habit. Like, I, I gotta, I gotta let stuff be done. I'm getting organized too. Like, I gotta stop, you know. Like, everyone, I mean, it's, if I'm sending it off to like a manuscript, like a chat book or something, that's one thing. But I gotta stop just reading and like working on shit, you know. Like, well, let it be done It's sometimes. different for everyone. Um, I, ha I do have no qualms about getting rid of something after a year. Uh -huh. If it's not working, I have files. I have I have a running file of uh, professional stuff, like I just read, yeah. like stuff that's good in my mind. Yeah. And then my drafts and my notes and these sure, versions sure. that are baked. Yeah, I got. They're you. all in one yeah. file. I save I save all those. And there's so there's two files competing here, and every once in a while I'll pull a couple of the crappy ones out and fix them up and put them in the other one. Yeah. But at the end of the year, it's like clockwork for me. I'm like a traditionalist. Like everything has to be ritual. Mm -hmm. Um. I'll throw everything away and start over. Like it's like whatever's not in the published Spray. file, it's it's had its time. Yeah. It got me where I needed to be. It's not that it's um, um, worthless effort. It's good practice and it's this and it's that. It's just that some of these poems don't have wings and they don't have wheels yeah. and they don't have. There's parts missing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you just say fuck it. I can't. Yeah. I can't yeah. break through to this one. It's not. It's it's temperamental. I always. I <laughs> But I'm not. I'm not one. To I don't hang ever on. throw anything away. By I, the way. Well, Mike Kaczynski's like that. He's got his ever, little. I've got uh, stuff everywhere. So the way this. Uh, <laughs> I love it though. That's the cinder block full of notebooks over here. This like redneck bookshelf. The, all the notebooks on the left have written in poems and scraps of poems <laughs> and broken manuscripts. That is something you save. That's all. Yep, all of it. And then on the right, it's all brand new notebooks. Look at you, yeah. Every year I buy twenty new notebooks gotcha. at back to school sales. Yeah. So I've always got twenty fresh new book notebooks right. every year to. That's Bow great. Up, that's kind of like going back through your And own. every once in a while, I'll get one that's like, like there's some really good poems in there yeah. that have been edited into something else eventually. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's not all waste stuff, you know, but no. it's, I never throw any away. Like Valuable I said, for I've you. got two boxes in the back of like uh, printed off poems that, you know, I've forgotten about 10 years ago probably. And yeah, that's cool. So, but I have lost like all my poems a couple times I'm like, by the way. I get bogged down in draft land. And I find after six months, I'm like, I didn't write anything new yet. I've been Ooh, working yeah. on drafts. I'm like, I can't. Because yeah. I get caught up in the editorial. It's a different part of your brain almost sometimes. Yeah. It's still creative, though. Mm -hmm. Trust me, editing is a creative, sure. fun part of what. But I, I can get caught up in that, and I'm like, I don't yeah. have any new ideas I've been sharing. I've been just like. Yeah. I, so I have to start over sometimes. I get weird if I don't get like some new poems I can read. You know, it's yeah, like yeah. you go to two or three while, well, I mean, po Pre-COVID times, oh, man. but you go to two or three reading, readings in a row, and then you're like, man, I haven't read, read anything new in a while. Like I, like, I haven't shared anything new. You know, I've been reading old poems for a month. I got to, you know. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. Break, out, break it open yeah. again. Yeah. So. Well, then, you know, the sub shop and the, I mean, oh. we had some.
Damn, legendary just, place. Yeah, yeah, right. It's not the same anymore. Yeah. What are we gonna do? We gotta get this going again. So yeah, gonna... wait. Well, I, you know, this is. I, I, this is I, I got a theory. So if you look at the '60s, if you look at the '20s, and the '30s, and the troublesome times in America, mm -hmm. it has always produced great art. You know, so I got a theory that somehow, some way, no matter the outcome of the impending election, yeah. just 42 days away, motherfuckers. Oh, it's getting Hope you register to vote if you're not checked now, please. That's right. Brought to you by the Blue Collar Gospel Hour. Yes. Everybody, 18 and older, should vote. Seriously, get out and do your part. Um, right? At the very least, or else more people, the more people to vote, the more likely we are to win on the right side. And by that, I mean <laughs> Blue Collar Gospel Hour. The good endorsing guys. Biden Harris. The good guys. In case you were wondering. Anyway, so he's gonna be on you got any, list. uh, probably should start wrapping this up a little bit. Yeah. You got anything final to to add? Any kind of, uh, how's, uh, how's your, uh, I guess just life, how's it been during the COVID times right now? Oh, Has it God. affected you um, a lot besides not know, going to readings? And I'm really lucky in many ways, mm -hmm. um, and writers are. Because you still have your little office, and you, say, yeah, I mean, there's things to do. Yeah. Um, writers are are solitary creatures many times, that anyway. Is, yeah. So if at the very least it gave me that, I get to work from home. I didn't miss a paycheck during COVID, so it hasn't really affected me like it has a lot of people, which uh, people are struggling. Uh, we need to oh, have very blessed that way too. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been those of us who have kind of bounced along through it and are still getting along pretty good. Uh, we're blessed. And uh, that's how I feel. Uh, so. Do you feel like uh, being home more has helped your creative process? Like helped you? In some ways it has. I feel like it has mine. It's given me a chance sure to kind of like spend more time self-searching and working on what I want to yeah. be as a, you know. And that's yeah. something that will good, you know, come out of it. a little, sure. yeah, yeah. That's something that so. will come out of it. So I'm sure a lot of great poetry is being made right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, we're, we're seeing some of it. Exactly. And yeah, we're seeing some of the results. So sure. I, we saw some tonight. I appreciate so. it. Yeah. But, Mike, I want to say thanks for coming and joining us tonight. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, like I said at the start, you're one of my favorite local poets. Oh, dude, it's mutual. Um, I feel like we talk a lot about Michael Grover and... Johnny McIntyre, but Mike Hackney's a pretty badass fucking poker man. <laughs> By the way, I, I can't remember where we first met, if it was a trunk or the right. sub shop. It was one of the old school places, mm -hmm. like old school like in the last five years. Mm -hmm. um, now defunct readings. Right. Um, but I remember you read a poem about eating donuts in a car or something and kind of... Yep. And uh, I'll just say that. Yeah. And I thought, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Not only is that good, but wow. Like, it's open, and I'm like, raw, and I can relate to, you know, some of the... And I was like, and that's like, I, I couldn't wait to talk to you afterwards, and that was kind of like... I appreciate You know, it. talk about, you know, a surprise. It was a... Because you were kind of like, dressed kind of like, I guess, like a 70s professor. And you kind of got this, like... Smile through you. Like, I kind of... I'm not jealous of it, because I'm very comfortable in my cargo shorts and t-shirts, you know. I know that. But you've got, like, a distinct, like... You look like a beat poet, man. It's uh, you know you look like a fucking poet. It just should be mutual respect all around. It, you know it it, you know, it, it, uh, it is good it, feelings you know, it and is. good vibes yeah. all around. We are ourselves. Yeah. And at the end of the and day, we all got a spot at the table. We wear you know, well. We all wear well. We're talking about having a production company, by the way, and calling it the Whole Crew Eats. That's kind of our philosophy here, by the way. Loving it. So try to feed our guests. And, yeah. If you notice. Dude, I get it. So, and the, the we want people to feel welcome. Fucking potatoes and sausage so, and everything. Hey, I hope you. Ho hopefully, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll be able to work together on some projects soon here in the studio. Dude, and I'm all about it. And uh, I've got some ideas we'll talk about off air. Hell yeah. So, dude, this has been fun. But, uh, oh yeah, and that's hey, for sure. I hope listen people to listen to it. Shit. And if they don't, it's been fun <laughs> for me. You know. So Sweet. all right, brother. Hey, thanks awesome. for coming on, man. Awesome, man. Good talk. All right, talk to you soon. Happy birthday. Yep. Thanks, brother.